Hello, this is a quick overview of the online MBA program at the Zarb School of Business at Hofstra University. My name is Dr. Kaushik Sengupta. I'm the Associate Dean of Business Graduate Programs. I'm also a Professor and Chair of the Management and Entrepreneurship Department and Director of the Online MBA program. I want to give you a quick overview about the program with a little bit of information regarding the background to this program as to where we came from. Um, where it is um, kind of located in terms of the other programs within the ZARP schools graduate program offerings and hopefully this information will be useful to you as you explore this particular program. Just a quick uh, note here, um, the online MBA program started in 2011 and basically when we started the program in 2011 it was uh, based on years of experience in terms of delivering high quality MBA programs from the campus at Hempstead. Um, so essentially we started teaching uh, online in about 2008 time frame from that particular period. And so by the year when we got to starting the online MBA program in 2011, we thought that we had enough experience teaching online and therefore the program was kind of devised and developed at that point of time. So we've had a long tradition of excellent business programs. We also have the double AACSB accreditation in both business and accounting, which is only held by top 5% of the schools worldwide. Uh, most of the program's courses are taught by full-time faculty members. When I say most, um, it's really about 90-95% of the courses are actually taught by the full-time full, uh, full faculty members. Um, essentially, we do employ a few courses in the especially in the healthcare management area where we employ um, leading industry experts to deliver some of those courses. So all of us who are teaching online are um, teaching on campus also. So you essentially get the same uh, quality and rigor of the courses in this program as you would in the on-campus program. The ZARP School of Business actually have been has been going through a number of improvements and development over the last few years. So I just wanted to point out some of these things to you. As an online MBA student, um, especially when you're here on campus for a couple of times during the duration of the program, you will be experiencing some of these facilities firsthand, basically. So we have a new building that's coming up uh, in fall 2018, which will actually house um, a Center for Entrepreneurship Incubator, which currently is, is located uh, at a different location on campus, but will now move into this new building once we move into the building next year, basically. We have a new marketing behavioral research lab that was co-founded from um, a co-founded rather from New York State DOE grant uh, that will also be a state of the art lab which will be in the new building. We will also have enhanced online and video conferencing facilities in our classroom building which is adjoining to the new building and therefore we'll have a better experience delivering the online MBA courses. The ground baking as you know uh, as it shows here was this past May in 2017. I wanted to point out also to uh, a couple of external validation surveys where the program was ranked quite highly. Uh, the Princeton Review rankings actually um, came out uh, recently with their top 25 online MBA ranking and we were ranked number 15 in the nation. Basically, um, essentially these were um, only the top 25 programs were ranked in this particular study and they only looked at about 90 ASCSB accredited programs. So this is a highly um, reputable journal, the Princeton Review uh, and publication, obviously, and to be ranked in the top 25 is really um, kind of a symbol or rather, you know, um, a testament to the fact that, you know, we're doing an external validation through this service as to how other people outside of the ZARP School of Business and Hofstra University view these programs, basically. We also have had a consistent ranking in the top 40 uh, in terms of the US News and World Report rankings. This is actually a larger sample as you can see. Almost 255 programs were in the survey and about 239 programs are ranked. We did actually have a 20 position improvement from the previous year. So that was also pretty heartening in terms of knowing that, you know, uh, a journal like the US News and World Report and the rankings which are quite well known and quite um, nationally, you know, announced basically, uh, kind of recognize the program. This also makes um, the online MBA at Hofstra the only program in both rankings. It's also the highest online MBA program in the New York area. So, um, so when you're looking at um, a potential program like this one, you should be looking at number one, you know, the reputation for the school in terms of being able to deliver a high quality program. 
um, over a period of time and going back to when we did not have the online uh, mode of delivery, um, how the traditional MBA programs are viewed from that particular school. So a reputation and uh, a track record of being able to deliver good programs is obviously the key. You also should be looking at some of these rankings information because there's a whole lot of programs out there as we all know and this is an external validation of what we do and that's just another way of kind of looking at what the quality of the program should be and would be basically. A little bit of overview of the online MBA structure as I said is ASCSB accredited because of the fact that the ZARP school is accredited. Um, we're going to have a small cohort class of 25 students so if we do end up with more students it will be split into multiple cohorts so we don't want to increase the size of the class to 40 or 50 students essentially so that is key to us. We do have two concentrations fully online at this point. Five additional options in terms of concentrations would be available in fall of 2018. I'm going to expand on that a little bit. Uh, it is a separate admissions process. Um, so you apply to this specific program specifically in your application. You mentioned that I'm applying to the online MBA program and we allow transfers to the on-campus program with certain options um, and conditions basically Usually people who are applying to the online MBA program and decide to, uh, after getting admitted, decide to get enrolled in our program, pretty much stay with the program basically. But we do have an option where if you think the on-campus program is a better suit for you in terms of after you started online MBA, there would be a transfer possible with certain conditions. Um, the same MBA degree in the online MBA uh, program as in the on-campus programs, uh, we feel that we are giving you the same education, the same value, the same rigor in the courses. So you essentially get the same MBA degree. There is no mention of online anywhere on the degree or in the transcripts. The program structure is um, uh, kind of interesting a little bit because it has a few options, a couple of options. So let me go through that. So in the cohort option, we have the duration of the program is 20 months. So if you start in the cohort in, in September, let's say, uh, you are going to finish within 20 months of that period. And in this uh, kind of a mode, you're going to have four courses per semester. But at any point of time, you're going to go through two courses. Each of these courses are seven week long courses, basically. So you have two courses in the first seven weeks of the semester. You have a one week break in the middle and then you have another two courses in the second half of the semester and that pattern kind of follows for the fall the spring we have two additional courses in the summer and then follows through the next you know the corresponding the subsequent fall semester and the subsequent spring semester to map into the 20 month plan basically we do have the uh, flexible option where you can actually take up to five years to complete the degree um, our average completion rate, this is actually based on our Flex MBA model, that is the uh, program on campus, the part-time MBA, uh, where we allow up to five years. So we're offering the same option in the online program also. Our average um, years of experience, uh, not experience, but years of graduation, that is once you start the program in the part-time MBA, has been about three and a half years. And of course, it varies between uh, somebody who's finishing it in within two years versus somebody taking three and a half to four years to complete. So um, so we offer that same option here. Um, and of course, in this option, uh, you will have a variable number of courses per semester based on what you want to do in terms of the course load. So, so once you get admitted to the program and then you decide to enroll, then we can discuss this particular option if the cohort option you think does not work out well for you. I would have to tell you that um, if you look at the, if I look at the statistics of going back to the previous six cohorts, um, essentially what we end up having is that I would say about 95% of the students who have started the online MBA program and finished it have actually completed it in the 20 month period. So, uh, so a very small percentage, a minority of students actually opt for this flexible option. But it's good to have it because, you know, it does come of use in certain situations. Um, you may want to have a reduced load because of your work pressure, because of family constraints. You may want to do it because of financial reasons, you know, so there are various reasons why you may want to go to the five-year option. But as I said, you know, a, a significant majority of the students are actually completing it within the 20 months. Let me talk to you about the curriculum components. So it's a 45 credit hour program um, of which 33 credit is the core and 12 credit is the concentration. And, and the course options are obviously that. Um, 
The curriculum components does include uh, two three-day on-campus residencies. Um, what we call these are residencies are basically the first one is an orientation program over three days, like a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, and then there's a capstone residency, which is a similar three-day uh, component at the end of the program leading up to graduation. I'll talk a little bit more about the orientation in the next slide. We also have a 10-day global practicum, which is intertwined within the curriculum at this point. And that happens usually in the summer between the first year and the second year. And I have some additional details on that coming up, basically. So as you can see, um, it is a 45 credit hour program. Um, 33 credits of that is the core, which is going to be uh, common for everybody in the program. And then the 12 credits are going to be concentration courses in the specific concentration of which you want to focus on, basically. The courses are all completely online. You're obviously saving on your commuting time. You're not coming to campus. Um, I already mentioned the fact that it's predominantly taught by full-time faculty members and some industry executives. And I already talked to you about the fact that these do have the same rigor and content as in the on-campus courses. So just to give you an example, our on-campus graduate MBA courses uh, span the entire semester of 15 weeks. Here in the, in the program courses, we are doing it in seven weeks. So you basically get the same material that is delivered over 15 weeks in an on-campus course in that seven-week period. So, um, so we're not cutting out on any content or rigor of these courses just because it's over a shorter duration. Um, actually, the benchmark and the best practice in delivering online courses actually talk to the fact that you know shorter duration courses are more effective online than longer duration courses which lasts the entire semester. So that's kind of why we have gone to this particular model. The course components are primarily asynchronous, which what that means is that um, as the professor, I will make the material available to you for the week and maybe for the entire course. And, um, and it's asynchronous as in I'm not asking you to come online at a particular time of the day or day of the week. Some of us do end up doing, um, you know, a few collaborative sessions through the week. Usually this is about an hour, at most two hours, once a week. So it's not a big deal in terms of giving that commitment for, uh, for the synchronous sessions. Um, we end up recording those synchronous sessions. So you do have a way to kind of look at the recording if you cannot be there for that live session. But for the most part, the courses are asynchronous, which means you can basically go through the course material on your own schedule depending on when the best time for you is in terms of going through the material. The only caveat there is obviously there are going to be deadlines throughout the week. Um, there's a lot of uh, a lot of the components in the courses are interactive. Like as I show here, um, discussion forums, case discussions, uh, wikis and blogs for instance, group work as and when they come up in the courses. They're all collaborative obviously with the rest of the class. So you do have to meet the deadlines for the courses through the week, but whether you do the material at two in the morning, five in the morning, or eight o'clock in the evening, that really is the flexibility that brings in uh, brings to the plate in terms of the scheduling. Because I'm not asking you to come online at a particular time, uh, at a fixed time every week to kind of you know to go through the materials essentially. So um, you can also kind of see that this would work to your advantage in terms of. Um, if you want to kind of catch up on reading on certain parts of the course uh, during, let's say, your daily commute or during a certain downtime at work, if you have that, um, it's really flexible from that perspective. So, um, and I would have to tell you also that 100% um, of all the students in this program are full-time working professionals. So the fact that they have um, been able to do it successfully also means that if you're, when you're looking at this program as a as a potential way to kind of get your MBA. Um, and if you talk to some of the current students and many of the alums, they'll basically tell you that this is the only way I could have done the MBA is to do it online basically, because I could not commit myself to coming to campus uh, at a particular time of the day uh, on a given night um, for 15 weeks in a row. So um, so really it works well in terms of the, the structure of the program, how we have designed it. And it also works well based on your needs as a full-time working professional. Let me talk a little bit about the three-day orientation residency. So as I said, um, this is over three days. So we do it usually the last weekend in August. Um, so there's a lot of things we go through here. Um, um, you know, a lot of this is actually done uh, over the three days, but a majority of the delivery of the orientation pieces to introduce you to the program 
is done during the first day on that particular Friday. So you get to know the success factors, you get to know the pedagogical approach for how we deliver the courses. Uh, one of the big pieces is that, um, you know, you're going to have the first four courses in the first fall semester and you get to meet the faculty who will be teaching those courses. So each faculty member who's teaching an online course in this program has to deliver uh, like a 60 or 90 minute session with you face to face as part of this orientation program. So this is a really great way of kind of, um, you know, breaking the ice a little bit, if you will, in terms of what their expectation is, um, in terms of the courses, how they're expecting to deliver the courses, uh, and of course, give you a chance to kind of interact with the faculty member directly and put a face uh, to the name, basically, you know. Um, so that's kind of worked really well. Um, we do um, do a few other components, like you'll uh, get to talk to the KDS services folks. We do have a ZARP graduate program dedicated career services team. So they will be meeting with you during this orientation. Uh, we try to build this networking with the cohort as a very, very important component in the program uh, as you go forward from the orientation. So we do have a couple of teamwork and communication workshops as part of this orientation so that we can build a rapport within the group, basically. Um, we do have a few uh, interaction sessions with industry executives. There are, uh, there's actually a couple of uh, things that we do in terms of interaction with current students and alums from this program. Um, one is that um, on the second day of the residency, which is the Saturday, basically, what we end up doing is that um, we do a similar residency for our continuing students uh, for essentially the one day before the semester begins. So they are on campus for that particular Saturday when you guys are here for the three days. Uh, and you get to do an interactive luncheon with them, with the current students, that is, to essentially hear directly from them firsthand as to what their experience has been in the program. Remember, when you're doing this orientation residency, uh, the current students would be basically transitioning from their first year, completion of the first year, to the second year. So essentially, um, you know, you do have that situation that you can get that experience and, and that interaction from the students firsthand, basically. We also have a separate session where I invite some of the alums to come to dinner that particular evening and basically, you know, do a similar kind of an interaction with you all uh, to, again, to just provide you the experience as to what their exposure was in this program, what they felt was good, what they felt was things that you should be looking for to be successful in the program. It's really a great component in terms of understanding, you know, somebody from somebody directly who have gone through the program and you know to to share their experiences with you basically and one big piece obviously is uh because this program and the courses within the program are obviously couched within the you know the overall academic systems and policies that we have at the university um there's going to be a fair amount of discussion on those policies and systems um as you get familiar with the start of the program basically so it's a lot covered in the orientation residency um we try to make this flexible again, like the rest of the program is. So, um, so if there's an option uh, for us to, for you to kind of join the residency, but let's say you cannot be there physically, uh, we do make options for having a video conferencing um, session there, so where you where you can join online. If you have a religious observance on Saturday, for instance, um, we try to do some flexibility around that. Um, obviously, um, if you can be there for the entire duration, that's the best thing we can do. But we've had um, situations where we have done some exceptions based on the particular needs of that of that one or two students um, and kind of worked around it, basically. Let me talk a little bit about the global practicum. So this is a 10-day international trip. Um, this is actually part of our international business curriculum in the program. Um, and essentially, the professor who teaches the international business course is, uh, is required to be on this trip every year. So... Uh, it is a 10-day international trip uh, incorporating essentially cultural immersion and business visits. We include the costs of this trip in the program itself, including travel, meals and accommodation, ground transportation and everything. So you really don't need to worry about anything related to planning for the trip because we all do it ourselves you know, from the Hofstra side, that is the arrangement of this. Usually we end up going to multiple cities. Uh, depending on the location, we started doing this since um, actually 2016 when we started looking at exposing you know, the, this trip to two different cultures within this period. 
so um, so that you can get kind of a understanding of the cross-cultural aspects also. So let me just give you a little bit of details as to what has happened over the last few years. China 2012 was the first cohort. Um, as you can see, we visited Hong Kong, Guangzhou, Shenzhen, and Beijing. Uh, major companies, Walmart, Morgan Stanley, Lenovo. Um, by the way, the uh, the Sam's Club Walmart in uh, Shenzhen is actually Sam's Club, especially is the world's largest Sam's Club in square footage area. So that was kind of interesting to go and see there what they're doing different from what we have as Walmart in this country, basically. And of course, the usual uh, cultural immersions at the Great Wall, the Tiananmen Square, the Forbidden City, and so on. So, uh, so that was the first cohort. The next year, we went to Japan, um, two major cities, as in Tokyo and Osaka, and then sister cities in Yokohama and Kyoto, basically. And again, some great visits there in terms of the companies and the traditional sites and so on. This was also the first year when we had healthcare people in the program. So as you can see, visit a couple of hospital systems in Japan, um, one in Tokyo, one in Osaka, a pharmaceutical company in Osaka and so on. So it was a great visit that way. Um, the following year, it was to Cape Town and Johannesburg. Um, so you can see we kind of tried to rotate the destinations a little bit. And I'll come to it as to why we do that in a little bit. Um, and then again, you know, some exciting visits there. Uh, back to China in 2015, but this time going to Shanghai and Beijing with a site cultural trip to Xi'an, basically. Um, and then um, 2016 was the first year, as I was mentioning, where we tried out two different countries. So we visited Tokyo and Seoul, um, you know, essentially to give you that cross-cultural perspective. And 2017 summer, we did Dubai, Abu Dhabi, and New Delhi, basically. So, um, and this is also the first year um, where uh, we tried out an experiential simulation as part of the group uh, business visit. So the students that were on the trip um, essentially had a little bit of pre-trip knowledge about the company we were visiting. Uh, they did some pre-work prior to the trip. And then there was a, um, a consulting or a strategy-oriented question that was, asked by the company and then basically um you know there was a presentation and feedback with the company executives on the trip we are going to be expanding on this going forward um in terms of the experiential simulation and we're kind of looking at this to be the the way to go in terms of the business visits uh, rather than um you know us basically listening to an executive for half an hour 45 minutes and asking some q a um this we think is more valuable in terms of the uh, the learning that you'd get basically. This was also the first, uh, actually going back, not the first, maybe the second time, we got a chance to, uh, to interact with one of the uh, equivalent uh, institutions in the country. So we vis visited the Indian Institute of Management, um, the one that is located in Delhi, that's actually in one of the IIMs um, have a sister, they have a sister campus in Delhi basically. And the picture that you see on the bottom left corner is basically an interaction that our students had with uh, with a similar group of MBA students from that institute. So it was a great visit overall, um, you know, and, and the reason for doing this is obviously um, to kind of highlight the importance of this cultural component and the immersion component. Dr. Yang Jiang, as I was mentioning, is the professor who teaches the IB course, the International Business Course. And that's his comments. These are his comments, basically, in terms of what students get out of it, basically. Um, and again, I would tell you that uh, there's no other way to impart this particular piece of the curriculum. <clears throat> I can't do this through books. I can't do this through a couple of business cases. This is the only way to do it. And essentially, um, asking <clears throat> for about 10 to 12 days of, um, of your time on this particular trip, uh, over a 20-month period in terms of the overall program, we think is quite reasonable. And if you look at some of the, many of the other uh, top-ranked programs, they do have this as a component in their program also. So it's not very unique for Hofstra, but we try to do um, a similar kind of an arrangement or a treatment so that you get that experience and the, and the exposure, basically. Let me talk through the concentrations quickly. So the two fully online concentrations at this point is one in strategic business management, uh, which is a general management kind of a concentration. Um, and again, this has worked really well for the program because our average years of experience uh, among the student cohorts has been about 12 to 13 years. So, um, so you're, you know, the typical student in the program is usually 
at the mid-career looking not necessarily at a functional MBA like a marketing or a finance or an accounting or a management MBA but looking at it more from a strategic angle so this would really work well uh, in terms of the profile of the students and where this uh, these courses come in basically so this is the fully online business management concentration we also have the healthcare concentration and as you can see what we have there our multi uh, area courses in terms of um, you know and what i'm listing here is actually the 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 course areas in the within the concentration so you, as i was mentioning before this is a 45 credit hour program uh, 33 credits is the core and these are the 12 credit components um, you're essentially going to be looking at taking let's say four out of these five courses to uh, to complete the 12 credits of the concentration so uh, again um, we are relating this to the recent and upcoming developments in the healthcare industry and these are some of the courses where we do have uh, leading industry executives at senior positions um, delivering these courses basically um, as i mentioned before at the beginning um, we do have plans to offer additional concentrations in fall 2018 in these five areas so the number of concentrations therefore in the online mba is going to expand starting next year so um, so that's an exciting thing for us because that means, um, you know, uh, prospects like yourselves have a greater choice in terms of deciding which concentration you want to go into. I have to tell you also that um, because the first year of the, of the courses in the cohort program are all core courses, you really don't have to, you have to choose a concentration, but you don't really have to choose the final concentration in the first year. You can go through the core courses and then decide on what concentration works best for you uh, sometime during the spring or even in the summer because these courses in the concentrations are not going to come into the curriculum until the second year basically so so you have time uh, the first year is all core you can switch your concentration if you don't like your original concentration or you can choose a new one and, or go the current one that you have so there's a, quite a bit of flexibility in deciding how you want to kind of uh, go forward with the concentration itself let me talk quickly about the admission requirements. So there is an online application form that you need to submit. Uh, we usually ask for the GMAT or GRE scores, but there is a waiver policy for the program in terms of the GMAT requirement. So we usually weigh it, uh, waive it rather uh, if you possess a graduate degree um, uh, like a master's or, uh, uh, or let's say uh, definitely a terminal degree like a JD or an MD degree will automatically waive the GMAT. With a master's degree, we have to look at your transcripts and your resume in relation to the work experience you've had before we make the waiver decision. So, um, so what we normally do is, if you're asking for the GMAT waiver, uh, I would ask you to please email us a copy of your resume with your de uh, details in terms of the work experience and academic background, um, and then we'll get back to you with a waiver decision. You could do that before you do the application to the program itself because that's a separate kind of an additional component in terms of the decision um, and of course if we give you the waiver um, you're just submitting the remainder of the application which would be your resume a personal statement as to why you think this program is the program for you what are you going to get out of this mba and so on uh, it's really open-ended so it's a personal statement as to why you think the mba is the right program for you and why the our program basically we need two letters of recommendation, um, professional letters of recommendation from your supervisors, from your peers, uh, whoever you think would be two good people to write letters for you. We obviously need all the transcripts. I do say official transcripts. That's what we need eventually. You can scan and upload unofficial transcripts as part of your application. We will, we can make, um, you know, a decision and a review uh, on your application based on the unofficial transcripts and eventually you need to submit um, the official transcripts if anybody is an international student not had a degree from um, a primarily english speaking uh, country that is you need to submit toefl or ielts course and usually once all of these is complete and you have a completed application i usually schedule a short phone conversation with you um, you know just to kind of uh, kind of tie in some loose ends if there are any answer uh, you know ask you a few questions regarding uh, questions that we may have as we are reviewing the application and of course to give you an opportunity to also discuss anything that may be on your plate also in terms of discussion basically usually an informal 10 15 20 minute conversation uh, and then we make a decision on your application 
let me just give you a little bit of idea about the first six cohorts. Um, so um, actually, this should say first seven cohorts. I'm sorry about the title because we have seven cohorts actually. Um, um, and you can see the the number of students usually has been around 20 to 25 people. Um, so it's a small cohort so far. Um, the experience level range is pretty wide, as you can see, as I mentioned before, um, the uh, average experience is around 12 to 13 years. And of course, a majority of the people in the cohorts are in and around the tri-state area. Um, this is also the reality for many online programs, not just at us, at our inst institution, that is, but also others where um you know the majority of the students come from within about a hundred mile radius of the physical campus so we do get students from new jersey from connecticut people who live and work in manhattan for instance who would not come to the Hempstead campus otherwise and we do get people from um outside of the tri-state area we usually get about anywhere out of 25 people you probably get about three four or five people from outside of the tri-state area so it's a small number but but we do have some diversity in that area also so just to give you an idea about what we have had in the last seven cohorts. Um, this is really the end of my presentation. I hope this was kind of uh, useful to you. Uh, but again, if you have any questions after you have viewed through this, um, please email me. And you can also email Shauna Strauss. And I work closely with Shauna in terms of uh, the program's applications and the review and so on. Um, and our phone numbers are on there. Our email IDs are on here, basically. So please reach out back to us, especially uh, with regards to the GMAT waiver. If you think you can qualify or you will qualify, please send us a copy of your resume. And then we can um, you know, provide you with a quick feedback on that before you actually make the application. So I hope this was useful to you in terms of knowing a little bit more details about the program. And please reach out back to us if you have any questions. Thanks for spending the time on this.